This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you today to Disciples Net Church in the Lord's house on this day. We will worship together in song. We will hear the word of God. We will meditate on words that are spoken. And we will also, at the end, come to this table to take communion together. So now, let us welcome God into our midst, who is ever present and always ready to be welcomed again. Come, let us worship God together. Loving and gracious God, we open our hearts today to your wisdom and to your inspiration, recognizing in ourselves many things we need to decide upon to do what is right in your eyes. We pray for ourselves and for our leaders in our nations, states, cities, and within our church that we not rush to decision and thus commit errors, but neither let us lag doing no good through indecision. Lead us to make decisions not only for ourselves, but for the good of all who have to live with their consequences. When we find that our decisions have caused harm, let us own them and correct them. Help us to find the right way to the wisdom only you have. We pray for those who are in danger whether from natural elements of storms, water, wind, fire, volcano, and earthquake, or by human-caused dangers of war, violence, and mistreatment of others and our world. As these people struggle, let us help as we can to provide places of refuge and peace. As much as it is up to us, let us live peaceably with people around us. Let us find a way to end war and work to build a real, lasting peace nearby and far off. We pray for those who are sick and suffering pain. Comfort them in their time and work with all of those who are seeking to restore health and well-being. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless. Let them know that you are with them wherever they may be and prick our consciences to be with them 
and help to meet their needs as well. For those who are oppressed and who are in prison, grant them peace that does not depend on their outward circumstances and help us not to forget them. Teach us and guide us in the things that we can do to help bring your realm more into being in this world. Fill us with vision and courage to do all we can. Remind us of who we can be through your surprising and quiet power, even as we remember the words your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
he also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Greetings from the United Kingdom. My name is Anne and I am a student minister with Disciples Net. There's something very wonderful and mysterious about how things grow. It may be the planting of a garden and then watching for those first sprouts of growth. Or maybe it's watching children grow, getting out the clothes for the beginning of the school year and discovering the pants are too short. For me, it's music, seeing how melody and harmony and rhythm can grow into a magnificent piece of music. How the difference between a piece in a major key and a minor key changes completely the image of color that we might associate with that particular piece or how a progression of chords can cause dissonance in our souls or offer us a sense of rest, like coming home. Think about Beethoven's Fifth Symphony a single motive of only four notes introduces the piece, and out of the development of that motive comes a masterpiece. Those four notes, not much different than a mustard seed, bring an entire piece of music together. There is a sense of mystery, whether we are watching seeds grow into healthy, wonderful vegetables that we can eat or watching our children grow into loving and caring people, or just simply hearing the music. In our scripture today, it's the mystery of the mustard seed. The smallest of all the seeds on earth, and how it can grow to be one of the greatest of all shrubs. We're presented in this scripture, like many in the Gospels, with one image that we can readily see, and one that's difficult to understand. A tiny mustard seed and the kingdom of God. How do we wrap our heads around that comparison? And what might we find hidden in the midst of this comparison between the kingdom, the seed, and what it produces? One of my favorite authors, Barbara Brown Taylor, says this about the parables. As much as we want to read them like Morse code, they behave more like dreams or poems instead, delivering their meaning and images that talk more to our hearts than to our heads. Parables are mysterious, and their mystery has everything to do with their longevity. Left alone, they teach us something different every time we hear them speaking across great distances of time and place and understanding. Maybe we should think about the parables much the way we think about believing in God or trying to talk about God. We never seem to come up with the right words. I told someone recently that God for me was like a Grand Canyon sunrise. You know, if you're standing on the very rim of this massive canyon, breathing in the beauty and waiting for the sun to rise. That image sort of works, but it really doesn't capture the immense nature of God. Sometimes we talk about how our heart feels when describing God, those feelings of awe as we stand at the top of a mountain peak, or feel the beating rhythm of the music of the Moldau River but we really don't do it very well because we can't say what it is exactly, only what it is like. Think back to high school when we learned about metaphors. 
describing something by referring to something else, getting at the meaning of one thing by comparing it to another. Jesus did it all the time. The Word of God is like seed sown on different kinds of ground. The kingdom of heaven is like a wedding feast. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Have you ever wondered why Jesus couldn't just say what he meant? Why the comparisons between holy things and ordinary things? I wonder if the answer isn't the surprises hiding in the midst of the comparison between the kingdom, the seed, and all it produces. Great things can have very humble beginnings. Mustard is a weed. It grows in the wild from a tiny seed. While other weeds spring from the ground and spread prodigiously, the tiny mustard seed inconspicuously comes to life, sending out a single root to probe the earth for nourishment. But while the others are gone in a single season, the slow, steady progress of the mustard's offshoots continues on for generations. The great bush that comes out of the ground from the germination of the mustard seed eventually produces a respectable shrub with branches that can support the nests of birds seeking shade. But keep in mind, it's a respectable bush, not a tree. Though a stately tree like a cedar would probably have represented the kingdom of God better. In fact, both Matthew and Luke changed the bush to a tree. They may have justified that change by the reference in Ezekiel 17.23, which says, On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live, in the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. But in the Gospel of Mark, it's kept a bush. And by doing that, Mark seems to be ushering in a kingdom far different than what Israel has long awaited for. The mighty cedar has given way in the Gospel to a kingdom marked by a Messiah who is identified by loneliness, meekness, and humility. To all appearances, his origins are as humble as the mustard seed. He's an itinerant carpenter who has gathered an unimpressive following. Fishermen and laborers, wives, widows, and single women. The poor, the afflicted, the sinners. Even a tax collector and a prostitute. The image in the parable of the nesting birds reveals the hospitality and inclusiveness of a kingdom that Jesus introduces. The spreading branches and leafy shade of the mustard shrub will welcome those who wish to gather and nest there, providing shelter and invitation to all who would come. The kingdom is not a mighty cedar, but a spreading shrub. Not the expected image of a kingdom of power and strength. The kingdom is like a mustard seed growing into a welcoming and hospitable shrub. This is what Jesus offers us. It's not what is expected, and yet there is a certain integrity to it that makes it irresistible, which is why the birds are attracted and make their nests there. The mustard seed is much like God's grace. It grows in us as certainly and as effortlessly as seeds grow. Jesus is calling us to a very different way of being with ourselves, with one another, with the divine, by asking us to recognize that spiritual growth and intimacy with God arises as naturally as seeds growing. The harvest will come without us having to work for it, because God adores us, and it is this love that is the power of growth. Amen.
Friends, as we gather at this table once again, we've been reminded that even the smallest of things in the kingdom of God can grow to be very great. I'm thinking back to that night so long ago when Jesus shared the meal with his disciples and broke the bread and shared the cup. And although each one of them received only a small portion of the bread, the cup, who would have thought that as they carried it out and then took this bread and cup and sharing it again and again, that it would extend to where you and I are today. This is the meal that we're invited to, and we're invited to invite other people to. Now true, here on the internet, we can't actually pass you this bread in this cup as we'd like to. But we bless the bread and the cup that's before you, whether it's physical or held in your mind's eye. We especially like to remember those of our disciples and that family who may not be able to eat or drink at all. But you too are here at this table. And we bless what you hold in your mind's eye, that remembrance that we are all part of the body of Christ. We here at Disciples Net even keep the sheep on our table as we worship, not as toys, but as reminders that the people that we can't see out there are the sheep of God's pasture. And each is so important, so valuable, and we want them never to be forgotten. All are included at the table, and we invite you now to come. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the invitation to come to the table time and again to remember that we are part of the body of Christ, that we are part of your family. And we come to be fed, and we come to remember what Christ taught us. We come to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And so we ask now that you bless the bread the cup held before each one listening here. And help it as we take it into our minds and our spirits, physically and or mentally. Help us to remember that small portion of bread and cup, the part of the body of Christ that you ask us to take out into the world to make a difference. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. What was on that last night as Jesus was eating with his disciples that he took of the loaf of bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it and said to them, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took the cup. and said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you tell the Lord's story. Remember his death until he comes again. Won't you come now? The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of blessing poured out for you. Amen. Share this life of mine 
Son, one Spirit, and the three are one. One body, and He bids us come, be my guest, be my guest. that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Go now in the peace of our Lord. Amen.